NDP leader Jagmeet Singh just unleashed a firestorm of criticism against the Liberals' 2024 budget. Singh spared no breath in tearing into the budget for its massive failures and betrayals. His fury thundered loudly in multiple interviews. But is Singh's self-righteous outrage all that it seems? Or does political calculus lurk behind his indignation? Singh wants Canadians to think he's taking a bold stand. But might he be plotting covertly behind the scenes? Talk is cheap from the two-faced NDP. Their words often ring hollow. While shredding the Liberals' budget publicly, will Singh's party prop them up when it counts? Don't be fooled by righteous sound and fury that signifies nothing. The NDP has danced this dance before. They blast liberal failings to score points that embrace the government they just condemned. Singh's principles may waver before the altar of power. Canadians are right to question the authenticity of Singh's vocal budget criticism. Does he truly care about this? Or is this posturing merely designed to maximize NDP leverage? Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we start today's video, take a quick second to subscribe to our US-based channel, Street Politics USA, where we report daily uncensored US news and how the unfolding political landscape can impact Canada. You can find the link in the description below. The recent release of the 2024 Liberal budget provoked strong condemnation from NDP leader Jagmeet Singh. Singh slammed the budget as failing to tackle corporate greed, driving up prices and gouging Canadians. He took aim at the lack of an excess profits tax on corporations like grocery stores, cell phone providers, and oil and gas companies. We, we've said we, for a long time we want to see tax fairness, but our particular focus is this. We know that the major reason that the cost of living is up is because of corporate greed, whether it's the high cost of groceries, the fact that we pay some of the highest cell phone and internet fees in the world, whether you can't buy a home or rent a home either because of speculators or corporate landlords that are both scooping up housing and driving up the cost of it. Corporate greed is a problem. And this was an opportunity in this budget to tackle corporate greed, and the Liberals failed to do so. Singh said Justin Trudeau will not take on the corporate greed that is driving up Canadians' bills. The Prime Minister refused to reverse Pierre Polyev's $60 billion corporate handouts or put in place an excess profits tax. Singh also decried the budget's disability benefit amount only $200 per month as inadequate. There's a number of things that we're concerned about. We are concerned that the disability benefit that dis folks living with disabilities have been waiting for for a long time has come out at $200 a month. Uh, $200 is very insignificant or not enough to deal with the high cost of living that people are struggling right. with right now. So what's the plan to raise that up to an amount that is sufficient? What's the plan to address that? Singh also expressed concern about public sector job cuts, slowing down services, and the lack of additional funding to close the gap for Indigenous infrastructure. But we are concerned about things like the 5,000 public sector employees that are being, uh, were being cut. How does that not mean cut to services for Canadians? So we're, we're concerned about these things. The lack of a plan addressing the infrastructure gap before on Indigenous housing and infrastructure. Another major component of Jagmeet Singh's scathing critique of the Liberal budget was its failure to address the housing affordability crisis. Singh slammed the government for not tackling housing costs that have skyrocketed out of reach for many Canadians. Singh emphasized how housing unaffordability is driven by speculative investing and corporate landlords squeezing out regular home buyers. Singh argued the budget did nothing to curb these forces. But if you look at the cost uh, of, of housing compared to what people earn in terms of salary, that has gone up significantly, astronomically, really. And you look at speculation and you look at corporate landlords that are really driving up the price of housing, scooping up affordable housing, it is a significant factor. And it's something that hasn't just happened overnight. It's been over a period of time. Right. But it is a major reason. Economists agree that corporate greed uh, in housing, in cell phone prices, in internet prices, in our grocery stores is a major driver of the cost of living. In fact, across the boards, uh, economists have shown that inflation has been significantly contributed to by uh, corporate greed, using inflation as cover to drive up the cost of things. So Jagmeet Singh has been vocal in attacking the budget. He has repeatedly slammed the budget for failing to address pressing issues. Singh has railed against the budget's shortcomings in multiple public interviews. But the most damning part of Singh's budget response was his deflection to answer whether this harsh criticism means the NDP will actually oppose the budget. He avoided giving a definitive position on whether the NDP will vote against the budget or withdraw its support for Trudeau's liberal government. So what are you going to do then? Because as, as you noted, you do have concerns about this budget. Are you willing to vote against it? Well, we said we're not making a decision on how we're voting yet. 
And what I'm going to do is raise my concerns with the Prime Minister. And I want to hear from the Prime Minister, what's his plan to address these concerns? What's the plan to respond to Canadians living with disabilities who say $200 is not enough? How are we supposed to live on, live on that? How does that actually meet the needs of what we're going through right now? What is his response to people who say if we're going to lose 5,000 employees at the public sector, how does that not mean a cut to services? How does that not mean people get less services than they need? I want to hear the plan. And so we'll wait and see what the Liberals say, what their plan is to respond to these very important uh, problems, and then we'll make our decision. Singh hides behind Colin for more explanations and clarity from the Liberals on aspects of the budget he claims to find lacking. But he refuses to draw a line in the sand and says the NDP will vote against the budget on principle due to its failures. This lack of clarity exposes Singh's budget attacks as political theater. If he genuinely found the budget unacceptable, he would clearly state the NDP will vote it down. Instead, his vagueness indicates his criticism is performative, allowing him to score rhetorical points without actually committing to substantive action. Singh wants to rip the budget publicly while keeping his options open. He likely hopes to extract concessions from the Liberals in exchange for NDP budget support. So make no mistake, this is all political theater. Behind closed doors, the NDP will support their Liberal allies no matter what because Singh is the ultimate flip-flopper who will play to whatever gives him power. Singh reeled against the budget for not addressing excess corporate profits and high cell phone bills, but his righteous indignation rings hollow. This is the same NDP that propped up the Liberals for years and enabled their big spending, debt ballooning agenda that has made life more expensive for regular Canadians. And Singh knows full well that his parliamentary votes ensure Trudeau can keep governing, so his criticism is meaningless. He wants to score rhetorical points with voters upset about inflation while enabling the very policies causing prices to skyrocket. The MDP is hypocritically attacking the high cost of living while empowering the tax and spend liberals who created this mess. Canadians can see right through Singh's political games. He's the king of talking out of both sides of his mouth, saying one thing but doing another. He claims to stand up for working people, but he empowers elite liberals who serve big companies over citizens. Trudeau hands out favors to corporations and donors, while Singh provides him cover under the guise of working together. Truth is, the NDP props up shady liberals because they crave power over principles. Singh will ditch any strongly held belief to get influence. His main goal is gaining leverage, not fixing problems. This budget perfectly shows Singh's flip-flopping dishonesty. He sounds upset about no action on greed and disabilities, but will still vote to pass it anyway. Singh's plan is to publicly bash the budget, then support it on the download to keep clinging to his informal coalition with the Liberals. He wants to score political points by looking like he's fighting for Canadians, when really he constantly bows to Trudeau's wishes. Singh is a hypocrite who can't be trusted. Trudeau and Singh complement each other's slippery dishonesty. Our Prime Minister breaks promises without blinking, while the NDP leader pretends to be outraged as he hands Trudeau votes. This cozy setup serves their mutual interests but leaves everyday Canadians hanging. Singh talks a big game about social justice and workers' rights, then props up liberals who ignore these issues. His actions never match his words. He's a phony who has no core beliefs, just a thirst for influence. Canadians deserve better than these two politicians who put their own power above improving people's lives. Trudeau and Singh are cut from the same dishonest cloth. Our Prime Minister breaks commitments and rules when it suits him while the NDP leader pretends to care before falling in line. This budget shows their corrupt partnership that is damaging our great country. Canadians are fed up with two-faced politicians who can't be trusted. The Singh-Trudeau unholy alliance needs to end for Canada's sake. Jugmeet Singh's political theater on the budget is not the only bashing emerging. Former Bank of Canada Governor David Dodge also eviscerated the budget, calling it likely to be the worst in years. But we're moving in exactly in the wrong direction. Bessie. This, uh, you know, I was saying to someone earlier, I think this is likely to be the worst budget since the McKechnie budget of 1982 in the sense of pointing us in the wrong direction uh, as to how we go about raising the incomes of Canadian and actually making Canadians feel better uh, over the medium term. Dodge warned the budget's spending and tax measures will hurt productivity and investment at the worst possible time for Canada. He argued new taxes on corporations and high earners will discourage the business investment needed to grow the economy long term. The ex-central banker slammed the budget for juicing up demand through consumption rather than boosting supply through smart infrastructure and skills training. He believes the fiscal stimulus will pile inflation pressures on the Bank of Canada without addressing Canada's declining living standards. 
Dodge warned the budget's spending will outpace its projected revenues, forcing the government to hit up middle-class taxpayers with growth-hurting tax hikes. He believes the promised $40 billion in new spending paired with the pledged deficit limits means average Joes will ultimately foot the bill. The former central banker argued new taxes on the wealthy and corporations would discourage the business investment essential to raising worker productivity and incomes. He explained capital investment is key to increasing output per worker, the only sustainable way to lift looting standards. Dodge slammed the budget for inflating housing demand through new subsidies rather than fixing supply issues. He contends adding demand without addressing supply problems will fail to solve the housing crisis. The ex-Bank of Canada governor posited better solutions would incentivize savings and capital investment, not debt finance consumption. He lamented that fiscal policy points Canada in the wrong direction at a critical juncture in the post-pandemic recovery. Canadians would be wise to heed Dodge's sobering criticism. Unlike Singh's empty political rhetoric, Dodge speaks with authority on the real economic impacts. His scorching budget critique exposes this fiscal plan as the wrong medicine for Canada's ailing productivity. With both credible voices like Dodge and bad faith actors like Singh shredding this budget, Trudeau cannot claim his plan has earned broad support. The budget is uniting Canadians across the political spectrum, but in vocal opposition rather than praise. After eight years of his failed policies, Trudeau should wave the white flag and quit for good. Well, that's all for now. How can citizens make politicians like Singh accountable if they hide their true intentions behind inflammatory rhetoric? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.